Hi folks, my name is Theo Copeland, also known as Broke MC. I am an actor, an audiobook narrator, and a podcaster. And today I'm going to show you how to use Reaper to record audiobooks for ACX. Alright folks, so when you open up Reaper, this is what it will look like when you first open it up. The first thing you are going to want to do is to make sure that your mic is being routed into Reaper. If you don't do this, you stand a chance of recording using your computer's internal mic. Many of them have that these days, and your audio will suffer greatly because of it. So I'm using a Mac. If you guys are using a PC, do your best to follow along. It's been a while since I've used a PC. Um, to set your, your analog input, you're going to go to Reaper first and Preferences. Under Preferences, you will find your Audio Device section, and as you can see, mine has already set itself up for the Avid M box, which is what I'm using uh, to input my microphone with. Now, if you have a USB microphone, like a Yeti or something like that, when you click on the Audio Device list, it should come up in this list as long as it's plugged in and powered on. And if that's the case, make sure it's checked, and then you're going to hit Apply and OK. The very next step is you're going to make a track. Now the easiest way to do this, especially for beginners, is just to go to track up here and insert new track. Very easy, it comes up right here. You could also click and or you can right click in this dark gray area over here and insert new track like that. Or you can just do the hotkeys command T and it comes up. I'm going to, I'll just leave those up there. We can look at them and maybe I'll show you how to play with them a little bit later. Uh, the very next thing you want to do is to check and make sure that your microphone is being read by that track. Um, the way to do this is you're going to arm your track. To arm the track, as you can see, if you hover over it, it'll tell you uh, what a lot of these buttons do. You're going to click on this grayed out red button so that it lights up. And then you're going to click on this gray area here where it says, where it says analog input 1. Now I know that my microphone is coming in through analog input 2 on my mbox. Uh, chances are if you're using a USB mic, it will just come up under this list. So make sure that's checked. And as you can see, because my track is armed, there is a visual readout of my voice as it is being uh, picked up by the microphone. If I unarm the track, it goes away. So I'm going to rearm that track. And at this point, we're ready to record. To record, we go down to the transport. The transport section is anywhere where you have a stop, play, pause, and record button and we are going to go ahead and just hit the record. As you can see, it is picking up my voice. If you are enjoying this tutorial and you have learned a lot, please don't forget to leave a potato. So everybody makes mistakes. We trip up on a word or our stomach makes a noise, our dog scratches at the door, a siren rolls by, anything like that. Now, when this happens, you don't have to stop recording. All you need to do is make a loud noise. You can clap in front of the microphone, you can snap, or you can go down to your local pet store and buy one of these dog training clickers. When you do this, you will see a visual representation of where you made a mistake, so when you go back in later to edit, you can find out all the spots where you said the wrong thing or something crazy happened that threw off your process. Please don't forget to leave a positive review in the comment section below. When you're done recording, go ahead and hit stop, and this dialog should pop up. This is the wave that you just recorded. That is what you can see up here, and you're going to say save all. If you didn't like what you recorded, you can delete all. If there are more than one here, you can always uh, select ones to delete and select ones to keep. But for our purposes, I think you will only always see one here, and you will just click save all. Now, if you want to listen to it, you just press play. As you can see, it is picking up my voice just like that. Now, where I want my file to start, I am going to delete the very beginning. Now, ways you can do this is to, well, you see, when you hover your arrow in, around here, you get sort of these different, uh, these different icons. What this means over here is that you can click on it and drag it in, and it will start cutting out the beginning. You can also do that here on this side, click on it and drag in to cut out the end. I'm going to undo that so I can show you other ways to do it. Um, before I go any further, I should have shown you this before, up here you see this magnet here. This is snap, okay? 
For recording audiobooks, I find it to be advantageous to turn snapping off. So we're going to unhighlight the snap. As you can see, it says snap disabled at this point. Now what that does is all these little lines that you see, um, when it's on snap, it would snap to those. But if you turn snap off, you can sort of just scroll to wherever you want. And that way, if you ever make a mistake and you want to join clips at a very precise moment, you can find that moment. A couple other things to know. On your Mac trackpad, when you put two fingers on it and drag up, you're going to zoom out. And if you put your two fingers onto your Mac trackpad and drag down, you're going to zoom in. So now that snap is off, I am going to drag this in to where I want my file to start and I can change, you can see the cursor is here. I'm going to click here, and the cursor is now right before where I wanted to start. I'm going to hit the space bar, which makes it play. If you are enjoying this tutorial and you have learned a lot, please. Now, just to be clean, I'm going to drag this all the way to the beginning. It'll only let you drag it to the beginning. You can't like drag it past the beginning point, which I think is very smart. Now, as I told you before, a good thing to have is a dog clicker. You could have also snapped, but that's what you see here. This is the peak in the audio. You see it like looks like a click sound. Now that you know what a click sound looks like, uh, we'll just play it so you can hear it. I know that I made a mistake there because I said potato. I didn't mean to say potato. So what you want to do here, and this is the fastest way that you can do this, is you're going to put your cursor right before where you want it to where your actual audio that you want to keep comes in that's here please don't forget to leave a positive review that is uh, after my mistake I said what I meant to say once you have your cursor placed you're going to press the S button S is for split and what it does is it creates a cut in your audio file so that they are now two separate pieces which is super wonderful because here you get to leave a potato. I didn't want to say potato. I'm going to zoom in by dragging downward with two fingers. And I'm going to look for the beginning of potato, which I believe is here. Potato. Oh, that's potato. 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 You might say potato. I'm going to press the S button again. And as you can see, this is now highlighted. That's the potato that I want to get rid of and the clicking sound. Potato. I'm just going to press delete. It's gone now. I'm going to drag this over. And as you can see, because snapping, I'm going to turn snapping on just to show you. If it's on, it will snap to these little lines here. And that's not what we wanted to do. So I'm going to turn snapping back off. I'm going to bring this in here. I'm going to zoom in further. And here's a great thing also that the Reaper folks have done for you. They have made it so that when you drag two cut files together, there's an automatic crossfade between them. Now what that means, and you can see with these little red lines, is that it will automatically fade this piece of the file into this piece of the file, which is great because sometimes you can get little clicks and pops if you don't do that. And on a lot of other files, it takes a lot more time to do it. So, I've taken this piece, I've dragged it into this piece, and you see a nice neat little crossfade between them. I'm going to put the cursor over here and press the spacebar to play back what I've just done. Don't forget to leave a... Please don't forget to leave... Oh, look at that. I am repeating myself. Please don't forget to leave a... Please don't forget to leave a... So this is actually where I want to cut it. This is great, because now I can just show you how to do it again. The cursor is set before please, which is what I want to replace it with. I'm going to press S. I'm going to select this file, place the cursor where I want it, press the S button, and then this is highlighted. I'm just going to press delete, and it's gone. And then I'm going to grab this and drag it over. You see there is the crossfade. And now we're going to go back and listen again. And you have learned a lot. Please don't forget to leave a positive review in the comment section below. When you're done recording, go ahead and hit stop. Now we don't want that little bit there, so I'm going to set the cursor over here, press the S, it splits it, and the highlighted piece, I will just press delete, and it's gone. Now we're going to skip back to the beginning, and I'm going to press the space bar to play this back for you. If you are enjoying this tutorial and you have learned a lot, please don't forget to leave a positive review in the comment section below. 
if you are enjoying this tutorial. All right, so I'm DJ Broke MC now. Um, now, this is your audiobook, potentially. You have cut and spliced together a bunch of little pieces. You've gotten rid of your mistakes and your mouth sounds and your dog scratches, and uh, you have your final piece. The way that you're going to export it, this is very important, is when you put your arrow up here at the top, you get this little selection cursor. You click and drag, you find that you can select a portion of it. Now, when I do audiobooks, I tend to do all of the chapters in one project. So I will put a space between the chapters, and then I will just select each chapter to export on its own. The other thing we should go over before we do that is an effects chain. Um, to meet ACX's audio specification requirements, you will need to probably do a little equalization, some compression, and then normalization. Those are the three most important FX plugins that you will want to use. So click on FX here, show track FX window. That's going to bring this up. And this has all of my many, many effects. Um, now to make this easy for today, I have actually created an FX chain. So this is the FX for track one. And I'm going to right click in here and I'm going to FX chains and I'm going to load an FX chain and I have demo two. Now, what is in here? We have what is called a parametric EQ. Um, a parametric EQ is basically a graphical representation of all the frequencies that you can record. And these are your low bassy sounds, and these are your high sounds, and pretty much anything below a 96 kilohertz, no, it's 96 hertz, is like bass guitar sounds. I'm being very simple with this because why be complicated? Um, so essentially, you want to have a high pass filter, which means that all of the frequencies above where you set it will come through, and everything below that will be taken out completely. That means the train rumbling under your house or um, the P and the B sounds that your pop filter that you hopefully have in front of your microphone is trying to get rid of will also be, uh, uh, be taken away significantly. Um, this is just a very helpful filter to put on, especially if you live in an area where there happen to be just low frequency rumbles. And there are things that we hardly ever notice most of the time. So a high pass filter. Um, in this case, I'm using the Apple AU high pass um, because I know that most Macs come with that free. So you can at least throw this on without having to jump through any hoops. The second thing that I use is the Renaissance vocal from the Waves Corporation. Now, on websites like don'tcrack.com, you can get this normally for around 40 bucks, which is a great deal. This is a super easy to use plugin, and it will make your recordings sound very professional because it has a gate, which is very helpful because it cuts out any room tone when you're not speaking. And it also has a compressor, which will make your voice levels a little more consistent. It means when you get soft and when you get super loud, it sort of compresses those peaks and valleys together so that you have a more consistent sound level, volume level through your recording. Um, if that sounds complicated, don't overthink it. Um, just get a compressor and put on a vocal preset. Uh, and I do recommend this one. Um, the final thing I have is a normalizer. This is also a waves normalizer. I think you can get it for like 30 or 40 bucks on don'tcrack.com. This is the L2 Ultra Mac Maximizer. And this, I tend to use the preset for the 16-bit moderate limiting. Find the preset, throw it on. Um, and then what I alter is the out ceiling at least to a negative 0 .3, 0 0.03. I sometimes go to 0 0.04. Uh, ACX requires a negative 0.3 out ceiling, which means that it will take your recorded file and it will find the loudest point in it and it will boost it up to that out ceiling so that it will never um, peak or anything like that in your final file. And your threshold was pretty much, it's like another compression which will help even out your, uh, your yelling and your whispering. Okay, so um, 
with these all checked, uh, I'm going to press play and you're probably going to hear a bit of a difference. If you are enjoying this tutorial and you have learned a lot, please don't forget to leave a positive review in the comments. I'm going to turn them all off real quick so you can hear again. If you are enjoying this tutorial and you have learned, I mean, to you it probably just sounds a little bit louder. That's essentially the basics of it. But by putting on this high pass, if you are enjoying this tutorial, if you are enjoying this tutorial, it's going to cut out just anything. But as you can see, it doesn't really affect the sound of my voice. It just cuts out all the unnecessary frequencies that are not in your vocal frequency range. And it's just an important thing to do in recording. As you can see in here, if you are enjoying this tutorial and you have learned a lot, please don't forget to leave a positive review in the comments. The gate is set so that the blue is the input, that's me talking. And every time that falls below the gate, it's essentially going to cut out all the room noise. Uh, and this, it does it in a really smooth way, and it sounds super professional. You're not going to hear, you know, the slight air conditioning buzz or um, the cat farting or anything like that. So it's a, it's a good thing to have. And your compression level you can adjust until you have sort of like the loudness that you're seeking. I don't like to compress it too much off the bat because it starts to sound unnatural. Um, and then if I click on this one. If you are enjoying this tutorial and you have learned a lot, please don't forget to leave a positive review in the comment section below. If your readings aren't going up to the threshold, you can always bring it down a little bit. If you are enjoying this tutorial and you have learned a lot, please don't forget to leave a positive review in the comment section below. And that will increase your overall loudness, which is a very good thing. Okay, so those are your effects. If you have an effect chain and you want to save it, you can just right click in this section, effects chains, and save selected effects. Oh, save, save all effects as chain. Um, It'll bring this up. You can title it. It'll save it in your FX Chains folder, which I bet you didn't even know you had. Um, I'm not going to do that because I already did it. Um, if you wanted to just add other effects, you click Add. You choose from your millions of effects that you have or don't have. Um, VSTs, you can just scroll through and see what you have. Um, if you don't haven't bought any yet, you're going to find a bunch of the free Apple ones under AU. I think that's Apple Universal Audio or something like that. And as you can see, there's the high pass. Um, there is a multiband compressor, which is going to be a lot more complicated than the Renaissance vocals. Um, but uh, if you know a little bit about compressors, or if you want to check out a YouTube video about it, I'm sure you can learn how to use it without buying anything, uh, especially if you're just trying things out for the first time. Um, yeah, so you can add, you can remove effects that you don't want. This is a this is the M compressor from Melda Productions, uh, also free, um, though not super easy to use if you're not familiar with compressors. Which I threw it in here to show you something you could get if you wanted a little something extra, but um, it's a little more than I want to show you how to use in this tutorial. So I'm just going to remove it. And these are my streamlined high pass parametric EQ Renaissance vocal compressor and L2 Ultra Maximizer, which is the normalizer. All right, and these are all mono um, because in this we are recording mono files. If it were stereo, you'd see two of these side by side, but you're only recording one voice at a time, so you will only have a mono file, okay? So once again, um, we have selected our chapter that we want to export, um, and now we're going to go to File, and we're not going to save the project as, we are going to go to render, okay? Um, when you render, it means you're going to take your recording and you're going to make all of the splices and dices and EQ effects and everything and export it as one final beautiful file. Click on render. The things you want to make sure you have selected here is uh, master mix for your source, uh, bounds, I do, time selection. That is what we have selected here. When you bring this up for the first time, it's probably going to be entire project. Now that's going to be all your chapters in one, but you want to do it chapter for chapter, so you'll make the selection and you'll make sure this is set on time selection. All right. Uh, you will name it. I'm going to call this demo. 
it's going to put it into your Reaper Media de uh, Reaper Media folder, and as you can see, it's coming out as Demo Wave. Now for ACX, they prefer a MP3, so we're going to go to Output Format, and we're going to put on MP3. Um, 44.1 hertz is good. Stereo, we want to change to mono because that is what ACX wants. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about all those things. Constant bit rate is fine. Lame is fine. And uh, 192 kilobytes per second is how ACX likes it as well. So then, all of those things set. Uh, master mix, time selection, your file name, mono, 192, MP3. And that's down here as well, 192. We are going to hit render. And I'm going, I already have a demo in there. I'm just going to overwrite it. And it does it like this. There's no peaks. If the, that goes red, then you've done something wrong and you need to go back and lower a level because you never want that to have turned red during your export. Close. And when you go into your Reaper file, you will see that it's there. And that's it. I hope you all enjoyed this little training video on how to record audiobooks with Reaper for ACX. If you have any other questions or comments or maybe I missed something, feel free to leave some comments in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe. Also, check out my podcast, the New York Open Mic Podcast. I'm Theo Copeland, also known as Broke MC, and good luck with those audiobooks, folks.